Uh, hello everyone, how are you? It's lovely to see you again as usual. So thank you very much for popping over just to check out what I made for tea this week. But just before I move on, I wanted to say a massive thank you to the supporters of the Wee channel over on Patreon. So thank you once again, guys. I'll leave a link to my Patreon just underneath this video if you want to go and check it out. So it's Sunday, so that means it's Meals of the Week. If you're new and you're not normally here, my name's Cheryl. This is What's for Tea and this is just the part of the week, like I said, where I show you what I made for the family meals for the previous week. I just like to put these videos up, you know, because it might give you ideas for for you and your own family. That's why I watch them and that's why I started making them. I just find them quite interesting and I'm quite nosy and I like to see what other people are having. I usually start off on Monday all the way through till today, which is Sunday. And as usual, I'll have a selection of your comments at the end, just from my videos during the week. So let's go and see what I made this week, starting off on Monday. So on Monday, we had one of our absolute favourites, which is bangers and mash. So it's mashed potato and sausage, but these are the Richmond meat-free sausages and we all really like these with some baked beans on the side. And if you do like a meat-free day yourself, I highly recommend them. They're really tasty for meat-free. Moving on to Tuesday, I made a simple tomato and olive type pasta. And I didn't have any garlic bread in the freezer, but I did have one of these sort of part-baked baguettes. And I just sort of made up a garlic butter, sliced through and drizzled it over the top. And it came out so well. So yeah, some, some homemade garlic bread. That's the pasta with some fresh basil and mozzarella over the top. Now you might notice that plate is moving a wee bit smoother than normal. <laughs> yeah, so I was very kindly sent a wee Lazy Susan from one of you guys. It's from Frank and as you can see, this is it here. And he sent me this to use in my Meals of the Week videos for my plate rotate just at the end. So thank you very much, Frank. It's worked out wonderfully. Uh, Frank's actually got a wood making website or wood working website and they make their own sort of creations and bespoke things and um, you know they, they make uh, one-off pieces and they do sort of your ET stands and mirrors and cheese boards and all that kind of thing so if you're interested go and have a wee look and I'll leave this linked underneath the video. Moving on to Wednesday, I made a beef and mushroom stew in the slow cooker. So I had some broccoli, a few chips for a wee change from the potatoes. And that's the stew there with some puff pastry on the top. And again, lovely smooth action with that wee lazy Susan under there. So thank you so much. Moving on to Thursday and we had our usual cheeseburger pasta bake. I'll leave the recipe for this underneath this video as well. Another big, big favourite in the house. We all love this. It's just so tasty and really easy to make. Moving on to Friday and we had simple soup and rolls. It was just one of the days, you know, we just couldn't be bothered. Nobody was that hungry, so out came the soup and rolls. So I had a couple of rolls and I put some tuna, mayo and sweet corn inside, a few crisps and some chicken and rice soup with some cream on the top. This was the chicken and vegetable soup that you'll have seen and I just added rice into it. Moving on to Saturday and with jacket potatoes or two of us had jacket potatoes with a wee side salad again with the tuna, mayo and sweet corn with a wee bit of smoked paprika over the top. So me and Mr. Watts for Tea had that and the girls had these corn chicken and ham style slices. It's basically a creamy sauce with mock chicken and ham wrapped in pastry. So I've, I've got to use up what's in the freezer. So they had some chips and baked beans at the side. I've actually, I have had these uh, in the past and they are really tasty. Again, for being meat free, they actually feel like a bit of a treat. Moving on to today, and I'd just done a Guinness stew in the slow cooker. So I had some root vegetable mash, some white cabbage, and that's the stew there at the side. And ultra tasty. Again, a really, really easy one to make because it's done in the slow cooker. I just love my slow cooker. So that was our meals this week, guys. So thank you very much if you're leaving at this point. And I hope to see you next week or even during the week for a recipe or shopping haul. For everybody else staying on, this is just a very small selection of your comments from my videos last week. So let's go and see what you were saying this week. 
Her first comment is from Alex Bosey. I would so make this, but my poor wife is allergic to nuts. Now, they're actually referring to the wee uh, Battenberg cake that I made that's rolled in marzipan. And I did, I think, actually replied and said, you know, you don't, you don't need to use marzipan on the outside. You could use fondant and you could obviously leave out the almond flavouring and leave out the almond flour. But it would have a completely different flavour, obviously, to your traditional Battenberg. But you still end up with a lovely, attractive cake. So I hope that helped and thank you for your comment. Our next comment is from Charlotte B. I'm thinking perhaps your version of Battenberg was considerably more than a quid, lol. I can imagine it would taste better. And that's because I said in my Battenberg recipe, you know, you can buy these for about a pound, but to make this one, you know, to make it yourself, it's obviously going to cost more because you're buying the individual ingredients. The way I justify it is, especially when I make something like a tray of caramel shortcake or something, the coffee shop that I go to usually charges about five pounds for one week square. I mean, I can make a whole pan for around £10 and you get about 12 squares out of it. So I just try and think of it that way. But you're also getting the joy of baking and the satisfaction, you know, when you've done it and you know that you've made it. So I think that's more why people enjoy baking so much. It's not really about saving money. It's just about the joy of doing it. But thank you very much for your comment. Yeah, I'm sure it was lovely as well. Next comments from Glyn Price. He's written, I th I, if I didn't know better, I think you'd watch my nan baking, but you're too young. I never saw her measure or weigh anything. Well done. Well, thank you very much, Glyn. Well, I'm 41, so I'm, I'm getting on a wee bit, but maybe just a wee bit too young to be a gran. But yeah, usually, I don't usually measure and weigh things so much. It's usually just for a video, you know, to give folk an idea of how much to use. But when it's just me in the house, I can usually just tell you know how much I need by eye or by sight so thank you very much for your comment your next comment is from Wind Horse Force Traveller. I can never say that. I apologise for butchering your name, but they've written just lovely. It would kill me not to taste it. And again, they're referencing the Battenberg cake that I made. I am in a bit of a diet just now. I wasn't really, you know, I didn't really mind so much because I'm not the biggest fan of marzipan or almond and, you know, that cake is full of it. So I wasn't too bothered, but it's lovely to see you again. Thanks for your comment. Your next comment is from Optimus1. I feel Mrs Doubtfire showing me how to make Battenberg cake. Thanks for the recipe. Well, you're very welcome. And the amount of times I've heard that is absolutely crazy. I've obviously seen the film, but I can't hear my voice there at all. Other than the fact that obviously we're both, you know, a Scottish accent. But I don't think we sound similar. But <laughs> thank you for your comment. It is one I get quite often. Your next comment is from the lovely Karen over at the Family Seesaw. Ah, nice to see you back at Aldi this week. Never seen cinnamon honey before. Must look out for that, lol. I think you need to do a shaking back and put the freshness back video clip like the old TV ads, lol. Well, maybe one day I will, Karen, because eventually I will be appearing in my videos, certainly before the end of the year. That's, uh, that's in the works at the moment. Just try to figure out a way of incorporating myself into the videos you know, just so that it looks natural and, uh, you know, that I'm meant to be there, which is quite difficult to do with recipes, I feel, because most of the attention is on the food. But yeah, certainly something I'm thinking about, but I don't know if I'll be doing the shaking vac just yet, but it's lovely to see. Uh, yeah, the cinnamon honey, I've never seen that either, actually, but we used that this morning and it was really nice. So yeah, definitely look out for that one if it's something you think you and your family are going to enjoy. Like I said, lovely to see you again and I hope you're keeping well. Last comment this week is from Pauline Kopuk. She's written, Great haul, Cheryl. Like the fever tree tonic. Never seen the little one. Oh, sorry, the Aldi one. <laughs> Never seen the Aldi one. No, I haven't either. Whenever I... We don't drink very often, but I've, we've got some gin there. So I'm going to make some nice gin and tonics for the garden, you know, with some lime and I've got some basil there and different bits and bobs to put in it. But whenever I have a gin, it's usually fever tree tonic that I use. And I just thought it was quite cheeky, you know, Aldi do that quite often and Lidl do as well, but Aldi, I think, are more guilty of it. You know, they do take very well-known brands and sort of um, 
pay homage to, to their labels, certainly. So yeah, it just stuck right out because, like I said, I'm used to, you know, buying the Fever Tree. It just looks so similar. But yeah, Fever Tree Tonic is lovely, isn't it? Yep. So thank you for your comment. Indeed, thank you all for your comments this week. I just love reading them and I do appreciate the time that you take out of your day, you know, not to just watch the videos, but, you know, you thumbs them up and you comment. So yeah, I do read 90% of them, but unfortunately I can't respond, you know, personally to each and every one of you because there are just so many now. But you can always reach me via email, which is underneath this video, or follow me over on Instagram as well. You can DM me over there and I'll be back during the week with another wee recipe so hopefully I'll see you for that but whenever you choose to join me again or whenever I see you again mind to take care of yourselves and I'll see you off as soon back here on What's For Tea. Take care, bye now. <laughs>